On today's show, the Trump administration eases rules for autonomous vehicles, Honda reveals a small EV concept, and the benefits of integrating rear steering with other vehicle systems. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the automotive industry. The U.S. Department of Transportation issued new guidelines for self-driving cars. And while the auto industry is happy with the rules, safety advocates are not. Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao announced that the department will allow companies developing autonomous technology to self-police its safety. Previously, automakers voluntarily reported safety assessments to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Now automakers can report safety assessments to the public on a voluntary basis. And companies no longer need federal approval to test autonomous vehicles on public roads. The auto industry and the Trump administration say these changes are needed to get the technology out faster to help reduce traffic deaths. But safety advocates say the new rules are too hands off and give the industry too much leeway. To help pay for its electric vehicle development, Volkswagen will trim the number of variants of its best-selling car. Bloomberg reports the company will reduce the number of engine and transmissions offered for the next generation Golf by almost half. Powertrain combinations with low take rates will either be eliminated or become part of an option package. In addition to saving money, VW says this will allow it to bring vehicles to market faster since they won't need to test a number of different variants. The company has ambitious EV goals. It wants to sell 1 million electric cars annually by 2025 and is spending over $7 billion to make it happen. Speaking of electric cars, we'll take a look at a new model from Honda right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. And by Hyundai, better drives us. While so many EV concepts have wild, futuristic designs, Honda's urban EV concept is much more simple. The three-door hatchback rides on a completely new platform, which is smaller than the Jazz Super Mini. No details were given on battery pack or motor size, but other highlights include a grill that can display messages, rear hinged coach doors, and a giant display screen on the dash that's linked to Honda's new personal concierge service. It will learn from the driver's past decisions to make new choices and recommendations. You know, I really like the styling of the Urban EV, and while I don't normally get too excited about a concept's design, Honda's president and CEO says, quote, a production version of this car will be here in Europe in 2019. Speaking of Honda, this should come as little surprise to those of you that follow Formula One. McLaren is dropping Honda as its engine supplier for the racing series. McLaren was plagued with engine issues all season long and will now look to Renault to power for its cars. Honda's not gone from the sport altogether. The Toro Rosso team announced it will make the switch from Renault to Honda engines starting next season. And while on the subject of racing, supplier GKN, whose electric drive unit we highlighted the other day, will now supply the Panasonic Jaguar racing team with its driveline expertise for the Formula E racing series. Coming up next, how integrating rear steering with other systems is unlocking new benefits. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. One of the obvious benefits of four-wheel steering is a reduced turning radius. About a year ago, we showed you a system ZF is developing that gives an F-150 a similar size turning radius as a Ford Escape. But the supplier is showing that by integrating four-wheel steering with other systems, even more benefits can be unlocked. Well, instead of using the um, actuators as their own things in their own world, we now can uh, have one um, 
integral chassis controller decide what would be the best system that gives me the most performance in the current driving situation. Also, if we connect it with autonomous driving functions, we can reduce the movement of the vehicle when the driver is not paying attention, not driving himself. Um, then the, the motion sickness feel that you get sometimes when you're, not, when you're reading while somebody else is driving, we can reduce that by moving the vehicle more slowly, not turning, uh, as you can see on the Vision Zero vehicle where we've uh, shown that as a smooth maneuver. What we've shown also on the, with the Cadillac CT6 on what we call new split braking, when you've got high friction on one side and low friction ground on the other side. Um, usually to keep the vehicle in place you would have to reduce braking power or pressure on one wheel to keep it from turning into the direction of the higher friction. Um, this yaw moment can now be applied with the rear steering so the driver keeps the steering wheel still. Uh, we have higher brake pressure because the rear steering now counters the movement of the car. That means not only does a driver have more control of a vehicle, but the system can decrease a vehicle's stopping distance. And in a future where a human may not be behind the wheel of a car, an autonomous vehicle could stop in a straight line on any road surface. So integrated four-wheel steering may be needed when that time comes. And a programming note here. Autoline After Hours is off the air this week since the crew is in Frankfurt covering the auto show. After Hours will resume on September 21st. And speaking of Frankfurt, be sure to check out our coverage of the event. John is on the floor of the show talking to the people who helped create the new models. Just head over to our website, autoline.tv, for the latest coverage, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please join us again tomorrow.